Welcome to track number two of Love in the Mega Church. Now, the theme for our camp this year is the Holy Spirit and the Mega Church. We will be sharing for just about 30 minutes and then we'll go and sleep so that we can start early tomorrow morning. Amen. So this is just an introductory, what do you call it? And then we will begin, I uh, will continue tomorrow. Now, I just want to talk about two things. One is the name of our church, Lighthouse Chapel International. Many years ago, our church began um, in Kolibu Teaching Hospital. And it was begun in a little classroom with a few nurses and a few medical nursing students and a few medical students. And the church's name was originally KCC, Kolebu Christian Center. Then in 1988, when um, certain things happened, I decided that the vision was greater than Kolebu. Amen. Amen. So Kolebu could not contain the vision that God had given me. So I changed the name that I had given earlier from Kolebu Christian Center to The Lighthouse. Okay? So initially the church was called The Lighthouse. Then the name changed again to Lighthouse Chapel. Are you listening to me? Then in December 1989, the name changed from Lighthouse Chapel to Lighthouse Chapel International. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? All right. Now, how many years ago was it we had our camp meeting at the um, Commonwealth Hall lecture room? About four years ago. Four years ago. 1995. Yeah, just 1995. Very good. We had just had some experiences. But in 1995, we had a shepherd's camp meeting. Just like this. It was held at the Great Hall. Uh, no, at the lecture room in the Commonwealth Hall of the University of Ghana. The premier university of our country. And... The theme for that camp meeting was the mega church. And at that camp meeting, I shared for the first time 25 reasons why we should have a mega church. Are you listening to me? Now, I, we shared reasons like so that there will be more people saved, more people established in the Lord, more souls won for the Lord. My brother in the brown, let me show you. Come. You, when you are feeling tired, you just stand, stand over there, hold your Bible. What's your name? Silas. Good. Paul is Silas. Anybody who is feeling sleepy, there is nothing unusual at all. It's one of the powers of the body. So just stand up. When I was driving to Cape Coast, I was feeling so sleepy. I had to stop several times to just be there because the sleep was so strong. Sleep is a very powerful force. So when it moves over you in the congregation, realize that something powerful has come. So don't sit down like a macho man. Get up. Because it's a power. Amen. You have to fight it with another power. Amen. Wisdom and other things you use to fight it. So anybody who is feeling sleepy, because within my first three sentences, my brother is asleep. So we don't know how it will be like in the next few minutes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, what are we saying? We had the mega church and we gave reasons for having the mega church. Souls will be one. Do you have the 25 reasons? Okay, write them down. Ma many souls will be one. Many souls will be one, number one. Number two, many converts will be established. Number two, amen. Number three, many people will be trained to become ministers. If there's a large church, there'll be more, what do you call it? People trained. Amen. Amen. 
Number four, there will be more faith in the church because when we come together, our, what do you call it, is multiplied. If I have faith, right, and you have faith, and there's a thousand of us, it's faith times one thousand. That is why pastors often preach better to larger crowds than to smaller crowds. So the larger the crowd, the more the expectation, and therefore there's more faith. The next reason is so that there will be more miracles in the church. Hallelujah. Alright, more miracles in the church. More miracles in the church. Because when you have more people, you have more miracles, more faith. The next one is so that there will be more expectation. Because when there's a large crowd, there's always an air of expectancy in the atmosphere. Is that not so? Is that not so? The next reason why we must have a large church is so that we can do the will of God. He said it is the will of God to have a mega church. The word mega means big. It just simply means large, big, huge, massive. All right? So the reason why we must have a mega church is because it is the will of God. Hallelujah. Amen. It is the will of God to have a mega church. Alright, the Bible tells us that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Didn't He say He loved Israel or He loved a part of the world. He loved the whole world. The Bible teaches us that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to salvation. The Bible tells us that Jesus wants all men to be saved, to come to the knowledge of Him. Alright? So, if that is the case, then obviously, since there are 5, 6 billion people in the world, God cannot be desiring a small church when He wants to save the whole world. It's logic. If you've been at least up to class 2 or 3, you'll be able to understand this. How many have been able to understand what I'm saying? Raise up your hand, please, if you have been able to understand. Thank you. Alright? So God wants us... Now the next reason why we must have a mega church is because it is the will of the devil for us to have a small church. The devil wants your church to be small. Because he knows that when your church is small, he has been able to keep away thousands of people from being established in the church. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? So the devil wants us to have small churches. And God wants us to have big churches. So we are fighting the will of the devil and we are doing the will of God as we have our mega church. Amen. The next reason is so that more prayer goes on in the church. When we have a large church, we have like, uh, 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 maybe there are 10 prayer groups. You get what I'm saying? 10 prayer groups. Maybe prayer duty because there are thousands of people. Every day you can have a group praying. Because we have a mega church, there are people in Switzerland on Friday who pray all night in Geneva. Another group in Wednesday praying all night in Zurich. Another group in Nigeria. As we are talking, maybe they are praying in Nigeria. They are praying in Sierra Leone. They are praying in Liberia. They are praying everywhere. Because more prayer goes on in a mega church. But if our church was just in Kolegono, you get what I'm saying? Today being Wednesday, we would be asleep. So there will be no prayer going on. And the more prayer that goes on, the more people are saved. And so the devil does not want us to have many people who can pray. And so he does not want us to have a big church. Are you listening to me? How many are glad that we are going to have a mega church? The next reason, how many do you have? More power. More power. There will be more power in the church. The next reason is that there will be more testimonies. Testimonies of what God is doing. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The next reason is that there will be more evangelism. Evangelism will go on in a big church. But in a small church, you cannot have much evangelism. For instance, Reverend Saki just went round and had crusades at various different... But I didn't even know he was going. Do you understand what I'm saying? He told me, I'm going to Kumasi today. I said, I, are you going to Kumasi? What are you going to ask? Why else are you going? He told me, I'm going to Abuasi and I'm going to Ejura and then to Tamale. I said, I didn't know. Chale, you are blind. The anointing is on you. 
So I don't even know, but the church is big. So things are going on, you get what I'm saying, and I, I'm not even organizing it or planning it, but it's working. And if we had just a small church somewhere, do you think that one of the pastors would even be free to go out evangelizing? No way! That is why the devil does not want us to have a big church. I'm telling you, the devil wants our church to be small. But we want to have big, massive, mega, mega, double mega. We had a shepherd's camp in London. The theme of the camp was double mega. Double mega missionary church. So we don't only want mega, we want double mega. But this camp, we are aiming for massive mega. I said we are going for massive mega. I don't know how that one too will be like. More than we can carry. The next one, there will be more money in the church. More money. The more people you have, at least if everybody gives 100 CDs and we are 1 million, we get what? 100 million CDs for offering. That's a lot of money for one Sunday. What do you think? Can we have 1 million members in Ghana? How many believe a lighthouse can have 1 million members in Ghana alone? Our population is how much? 18 million officially. When it's election time, they add more to their areas. 23 million. 25 million. Election figures. 25 million cities for elections. Uh, for, for the Congress. So if we have 1 million, it means we have 1 over 25 times 100, which is equal to how much? 4% of the congregation. Now, Young Ito has got about 1 million members in his church. And Seoul, Korea, that is Seoul, the city Seoul, they have a population of about 10 million. Or 15 million, something like that. But I read one book which said 10 million, and I read another book which was giving another figure, about 15 million. So if that is the case, it means about 10% of the people are in his church. That's mega. I see us also receiving a greater percentage. In Jesus' name. And when you have a mega church like that, there's more money. And when there's more money, and you have a good pastor, and you have people who really want to do the work of God, my goodness, the devil is in trouble. He is in trouble. He is in trouble. You know the reason why Ghana is the way it is? is you know the reason why Ghana is as backward as it is? In a certain sense, although we are not as backward as some places, but we are far behind. It's because, it's not because God has not given Ghana resources. Oh, we have enough gold. We have enough silver or timber. We have enough forest. We have enough boxer. We have enough every, and we have enough brains. It, it's a Ghanaian who is the Secretary General of the United Nations, in case you don't know. I'm surprised he didn't go to Achimota school. You know, but, but you must understand that Ghana has been endowed with brains. Do you follow what I'm saying? We have people, we have human resources. There are Ghanaians who are physicists and rocket scientists and astronauts and things like that. All over. All over. Nuclear physicists and things like that. The Ghanaians. You see uh, uh, experiments that Ghanaians have done. Discoveries that Ghanaians have made. We have sickle cell Sickle studies, uh, hemoglobins, and other things. We have a hemoglobin named after Kolebu hemoglobin. Kolebu? Yeah. Alote Constant. Professor Alote of our UST. Is that not so? He has Alote's Constant. Just as you have, what other constants are there? What? Einstein's theory. We have Alote. Alote. It's not that Ghana has not been endowed with intelligent people. Oh, but the power that has come into the hands of certain people has been misdirected. And so, it's as though we are poor, but we are not poor. We are not poor at all. And so it is with the church, that when power comes into the hands of the pastor, and now the pastor can control 10 million cities easily. He can say 10 million should go left or right. And he is a good pastor. And his mind is actually on the work of God, not on any other thing, like enriching himself or something like that. Then the work of God begins to go very far. And a lot of the work of God begins to be done. 
So that is why when we say that when there is a mega church, there will be more money, it does not mean there will be more bedrooms in the pastor's house. More toilets and bathrooms in the pastor's house. Pastors can only sit on one toilet at a time. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Shake the person next to you. Tell the person we are having a mega church. Amen. Amen. Then the next reason why we are going to have, a, why we should have a mega church is we are going to have more marriages. Oh, the will of the Lord is that you will be married. And you will be happily married. Amen. Amen. God wants you to be married and He wants you to be happy in your marriage. There are going to be all kinds of people in the mega church. If you want a tall one, we have tall ones. If you want a short one, we have tall short member. If you want a fat member, we have a fat member for you. If you want a black member, we have a black one for you. If you want a fair one, we have a fair one for you. That is the blessing of a mega church. I remember one day a sister said, Pastor, my type, my type is not in the church. <laughs> you know, although I rebuke her, I rebuke her, but inside me, I said, it's true. <laughs> her type is not in the church. When I looked through the church, I realized that her type was not in the church. <laughs> because the way she was, her type was not in the church. But when you have a mega church, all types are in the church. So at that time, the church was not so mega. But when you have a mega church, you can be 70 years old, we will officiate, we will officiate your wedding. Officiate your wedding. I don't know the youngest wedding we have officiated, but the oldest is around 70 years. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you are blessed, brother. There will be even husbands for divorcees. Oh, yeah. You may even have had a child. From the world that you brought, we have people who like to marry those with children already. In a mega church. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There are those who want those with children. Experienced ones. Yeah. We have all for you. How many are excited about the mega church? Every kind. Every kind. There are some people who want to marry white people. And a lady said, for me, I want to marry a white man. We have white people in the church. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Some people want to marry, Amer we have Americans. And more are coming. Because what is going to happen now, more. Sometimes you just be should I marry an American or an Australian? Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese cry, which I guess of. <laughs> Hallelujah. The next one, there will be more contacts, more contact connections, connections for jobs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, not only in Ghana, everywhere in the world, it is by who you know. I said not only Ghana, everywhere in the world is by whom you know. It's by who is in power. That is why they had a coup in 1979 and another revolution in 1981. It overthrew the people who had power and who were sharing the contracts and sharing the things. And today... They are also now sharing their own contracts and doing their things. Because it is by who you know. That's the reality of life. 
And so those who don't have contact become frustrated at the point and they say, let us overthrow those who have the connections so that we will be in power and share the connections. That's why there are a lot of people who have to go and get ID cards of political parties to show. Because if you don't show those colors, they will, you will never get a contract. You will not have work to do till you die. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. Let me tell you something. Not only They can say there's no work in Bank of Ghana for you. It, there's a difference between there's no room at the inn. When Jesus came, when this marriage was coming, the man said there's no room at the inn for you. There's a difference between there's no room in the inn or there's no room at the inn for you. So a lot of places where they say there's no job, they look and say there's no job for you. I am an employer. I'm the pastor of Lighthouse Chapel International. We don't need anybody to employ anybody now. But if I want, I can decide to employ you tomorrow. I can decide. I can decide to employ you, give you a very good job tomorrow. But if you come and ask, is there any job? There's no job. But if I want, I can give a job. You do understand the difference? Uh Uh-huh. So you must understand that every place you go, Barclays Bank, Standard Chartered Bank, VRA, everything, there is no room. There is no bank. Oh no, we are not employing this year. Check next year, May. Somebody's cousin will say, look, this is my daughter. She needs a job. I want you to get. Okay. Before you realize, she has become a managing director. Not only Ghana, America. All those places are like that. Switzerland, more. Everywhere is like, by, by that thing. They know you, they don't know you. So then when we have a mega tear and you are close, close to the pastor's legs, your, your, your nose is always rubbing his. Anytime he does like this, ah, you're always there. Eh? And you know his name. So there's any blessing. Those who are far away, you just be waving. Blah, blah, blah. But the guy here is getting all the blessings. Oh, yeah. If they have to take a ship and they say, somebody shouts from over there, look, I've got a major blessing for a ship. Do you have any ship? I'll say, yes, I have a ship. And I'll bend down. And I take the one that's near. And I lift it up. Transfer. Now that I'm going to write a letter for a ship who is far away, but I don't even know your name. Now before I'm going to get a recommendation, I don't know who you are. Amen. That's the advantage of being near. So come near. Don't be far. I said, don't be far. Don't be far. I said, do not be far. Otherwise, in a mega church, when the connections have been... Look, even marriage, there are people who, if you say A... I remember one time I told a brother who was coming to propose, I, I told her, look, my, my son, my friend, if I tell this sister not to marry you, she will never marry you. I told him. He said, I know. I said, it's good that you know. Uh, If I tell her that she shouldn't marry, she will never marry you. I know. So it is in my power to say, okay, go ahead and marry him. (laughs) (laughs) Connections. The next one. Mega church brings larger branches. When we have a mega church, it means that there are going to be big branches. The biggest church in the world is a branch. The biggest church in the world is a branch. Yongicho's church is a branch of Assemblies of God, in case you don't know. Eh? So when you are in a branch, it is the devil who will tell you that, let me come out and break off so that I will be big. Go and ask those who have broken off, whether they are big or small. They will tell you and write it, write it to you in color. Amen. So mega churches... I preach at a church in Nigeria, Reverend Adeboye's church, bigger than most churches in Accra. It's a branch. And I went to his church in Ibadan, very huge structure. So branches, I tell you, they are very powerful. So if you are in a branch, never tell yourself, me, this is a branch. One of the headquarters, the Reverend Adeboye's church, the branch in Lagos is bigger than the headquarters. It's far bigger. Far bigger than the headquarters church. So, branches, you can be bigger than the headquarters. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's up to you. Amen. The price is just the same. The same price you pay. You collect your thing and you are moving. If you are not prepared to pay the price, don't even think about it. The next reason, how many reasons do you have for a mega church? 
16, 17, we are approaching our biblical quota of 25% of the population. 25% I believe is the biblical quota for a church or for the whole church. Because Jesus said the soil went out to sow and one fell on this ground, one fell on another type, one fell on another type, and one fell on good ground. And that one gave forth hundredfold fruits. Is that not so? Is that not so? So one out of four falls on the good ground. Is that not so? So in other words, 25% can actually respond properly to the gospel. That means that if we are to preach to the whole of Ghana, which has 18 million people, and we are ready to effectively reach out the word of God to them, and give them the word, the seed, then 25, one out of four, should actually be really born again, and really established in Christ for good. And so, as we have a larger church, we approach it. Now let me tell you, at our headquarters in Accra, Maybe about 3,000 people come to church. That's head count. Come to church on Sunday. All the other so-called big churches. Maybe some may have 3,000. Some may have 4. Let's just say 5. Let us assume for the sake of argument that they have 10,000 people there. Which I don't think anybody has. But some people say they have 10,000. No problem. So let's take 10,000. Let us assume that there are 10 of such churches in Accra. How much is that? 1 million people. Oh, so 100,000 people. Now, how many people are there in Accra? 4 million plus. So when we have 10 big churches, which have 10,000 people each, head count, sitting there, not chairs or computer records or any other such thing, then we have only 100,000 people in the church. Out of 4 million and really, what is our expected quota? 25% of 4 million, which is how much? 1 million. That means that we are nowhere. I said it means we are nowhere. Pastor Ishmael, how many people are in Tema? Where is Pastor Ishmael? How many people are in Tema? Who knows how many people in Tema? About 1.5 million people. Is that not so? So if you have 500 people in your church, how much is 500 over 1.5 million times 100? 0 0.003. You are far from 25%. If you've been up to class 3 or 4, you'll be able to understand this calculation. Some of you didn't understand the calculation. But God has given us a baby. Don't compare yourself to Central Gospel Church. Lighthouse. Don't compare yourself to action. Don't compare yourself to IBWC. Who made action the standard? Who made central gospel the standard? Who has made any of these churches the ruler by which you should measure yourself and see whether you are doing well or not? Nonsense. Rubbish. Compare yourself with what is in the word of God. The Bible says they that compare themselves with themselves are not wise. Because maybe God, somebody, God is doing something somewhere and that is not a ruler that you should use to measure yourself. Don't use, maybe somebody else. You see, when you use the wrong standard, you often come out with the wrong result. Oh, you see a church and then you see the church. Oh, this church, our church cry is bigger than that church. Who told you that that church is the best church? Or who told you that church is in the will of God? We have compared ourselves with the wrong things. That is why the churches are the way they are. And if you think people are not comparing, you see, you deceive your people are comparing and watching. 3,000 is nothing. 2,000 is nothing. 500 is nothing. Compare yourself with the Word of God. The Word of God tells us that one soul went out to sow. One out of four. And if we have preached to a crowd, one out of four must be in the church. And that is at least we will have one million people in the church in Accra. Not only Lighthouse, but all the other churches. And I'm saying when you add all the churches, it's the charismatic churches which have the biggest congregation today. Add all of them, multiply their numbers, make it times ten. It doesn't reach anywhere. That tells us that we are nowhere. That tells us that we cannot be happy with what we have. 
that tells us that even though your church is bigger than the people you came to meet, you have done nothing. When you compare yourself with them, you are a fool. I'm telling you what the Bible says. They that compare themselves with themselves are not wise. You go to the wrong secondary school. Everybody gets aggregate 54, 48, 47, 39, and so on. And then you come. And then you come along and you say, Ah, brothers and sisters, upstairs, what's your problem? Are those people with us? They are coming around this way. Okay. And you go to such a school and people are getting 40 aggregate. Do you still do O level 54, 48, 37, 39, and so on? Then you come to the school and you come and you get aggregate 30. You say, Ah, since the school. Verse 6. Verse 6. Yeah. Six fives. Five, 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 five. Maybe you had eight. One, four, eight, seven, nine. <laughs> there can be no one inside. <laughs> but I says there can be no one. <laughs> you see, those of you at the back, you didn't hear the joke that was said at the front. You're far, you're far, you're far. You come to such a school, and you, brother, come inside and find a chair quickly, please. Nobody must come without a badge. If you come without a badge, you notice anybody without a badge, immediately come and report to the shepherd's board. Such a person may be a spy. FBI or CIA. You compare yourself with yourselves. <laughs> Are you not a fool? Are you not a fool? Do you know that in another school, I don't know what school that is that you are getting 48, 49, 37, and so you have come with 30. As you know, what school, when I was there, when I did my O level, Nine ones. It has somebody has done, and those is not this JSS uh, ten ones. This JSS ten ones. I don't respect that exam. I don't respect that exam at all. Because an exam where everybody gets ten ones before. I mean, what is that? It's not, it's not an exam. It's not an exam. And now a time when you say somebody has got nine ones. What? Watch it. Watch it. Skoka Mojna. I'm speaking Russian now. You have made me speak in Russian. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have seven ones. And I was I have seven ones when I did and I was not the top in my school. I have seven ones. Geography one, literature one, physics one, chemistry one, biology one, English uh, what? No, not English language. English I didn't have one. Math one. Add marks, one, everything one, except English language, I had two. Seven ones in a two, I did eight subjects. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <Whoa>. <laughs> hey man, let me tell you something, but I was not the top in my school. I was not the top in my school at all. We had somebody, somebody in house 12, he had nine ones. And then the seven ones, though, I think we were, we were about two. And the six ones, there were about four. And you are happy with your 30. You are happy with 30. Are you not a fool? You are in the wrong place. You are comparing yourself with wrong things. Wrong things. And that is how it is in the church. Wake up the sister with the eyes closed. Sister, what won't you meditation? Eh? What you are doing is not meditation. Sit up and open your eyes. <laughs> Listen to me. Don't compare yourself with Central Gospel Church again. Did you hear what I'm saying? Don't compare yourself with Action Chapel International again. It's wrong to compare yourself with things that God has not told you to compare yourself with. Don't compare yourself with IBWC and say, oh, they have only 11 branches. We have got 100 branches. Don't compare yourself. You are foolish when you compare yourself. 
they have used the wrong measurement altogether. You come to a school like Achimota School, and then you realize that aggregate 30, you, that you haven't gone to school at all. 30! 3 0, never! When you, are now, when you are in that school and you don't do well, 18, 14, our time, oh, 6 1, 7 1, 9 1, aggregate 7, aggregate 8, 10, 11. If you get even distinction 12, it's like you are, you are not among the elite. Oh, yeah? You see, so when you go and fall in the right school, you see the different standards and realize that, ah. That is why people are concerned about the school that their child goes to. Because it's not just the lectures, but the things that the child sees. And the child sees, ha, ha, ha. Everybody in our school goes to university. Then you realize that that's the standard. Then your standards go up. And you now learn to go to university. But when you go to a school where only one person by the grace of God and other miracles goes to university, you are not, you, you can easily, when you realize that, I mean, if, after all, if you are not the only one, I mean, it's not so bad. You got only one person goes. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Amen. Don't compare yourself with the wrong thing. Lighthouse Chapel. Don't say you are big enough. We probably have more branches than any of the other church. We have a very big church. Don't be silly. Don't be silly. Lighthouse, bishop, don't be silly. Pastors, don't be silly. Don't think you've done anything. Nothing. Compare yourself with what God has given you to do. And you realize that, Charlie, you've not even started your work at all. Not started at all. It's now that you're about to start the work. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Jesus said the sower went out to sow. You are the sower. You are the preacher. One fell on good ground. Only one out of four. But one out of four is a lot. If we can get one out of four anywhere, anywhere, we will praise God forevermore. So let that be. When that vision is in you, then you begin to really have the right vision. Do the right thing. Then you will stop fighting with people. Sometimes I see some pastors who want to fight with me. I just look at them and I, I wonder. I have decided not to fight with anybody. I won't fight with you at all. If you bring this thing to fight with me, I'll run away. There are some people I'm running as I'm running. I'm running away from them. I'm avoiding them like how you avoid the rattlesnake. Oh yes. Oh, I wouldn't go near them for all the rice in China. To give me all the rice in China and say Guaungu. Because I don't want to fight. I have a lot of things to do and devils to fight. Not you. How should I waste my energy on you? You. You. And especially you. <laughs> if you are against. <laughs> okay. The next reason why we must have a mega church is so that we move away from despisement despisement. When we are small, people don't respect us. Is that not so? Is that not so? They do not respect us. And so God wants us to get to a point where we are respected. The next reason is so that it means that we are more mature. Amen. Because a, how, how somebody say, ah, why do you say that a big church means maturity? It does. When you were three years old, how, how big were you? If you see somebody who is this, doesn't it tell you at least he's some years old? Huh? Does it tell you, have you seen a three year old this height before? Pastor Ben, have you seen it before? Three years old, you are five feet tall. It's a sign that you've been around for some time. As you grow bigger, it's a sign of maturity. How many want to be immature? Raise up your hand. How many want to be mature? All right. Tell, shake the person next to you and tell them, mature people don't sleep at this time. Huh? The next one is, it is a sign of unity, love, and teamwork. Amen. 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 Unity, 
love and teamwork. How many reasons do you have? Twenty. Okay, the next one is, do you know that it takes unity to build a big church? Do you know that it takes love to build a big church? Because when people are disunited, they cannot build anything big. And the reason why America is a great nation. How many people would like to go to America in your lifetime? Before you die. I see you going to America in Jesus' name. Now, the reason why America is a great nation is because it is many countries joined together. Many countries have been joined together. And they are united. They are in love with each other. And they are working as a team. That is why America is a great nation. And that's why Africa, Africa, you get what I'm saying? Is what? Some way. Do you know that it is in parts of America that they have oil? Texas. Is it Texaco? Texas, Texas Oil Company. Texaco. They have parts of America where they have nuclear weapons. Nobody else has only that state. And they fire from there. There are places where they have factories. Places where they have airports. Everybody has something contributing together. They are all one. Do you know that there was a time when certain states wanted to break away in America? Texas and others, they wanted to break away. But they managed to keep them together. And as they stay together, they are most powerful. Look at Soviet Union. I'm a Beloko. Very poor. But Russia is that doing. The only thing that gives Russia some power is that they have nuclear weapons that they can press to burn the whole world. That is the only thing that they are holding on to. As soon as they don't have that nuclear power capability, they are, they are nothing. Because the whole thing is broken up. Lighthouse, let me tell you, our strength lies in us staying together. Yeah. Did you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Anybody who is trying to break up the union, the person must be dealt with. Yeah. Amen. I said a person must be dealt with. Anybody who is trying to break the church, separate some of the churches, change the names of the branches, the person must be accursed. I said he must be cursed. We have lined up our artillery, tankers, Rambo helicopters. We have packed them. When you try anything, they will be given the command to fly and to just bombard you. With spiritual, physical, legal, financial, every kind of weapon will be released against you to destroy you. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. The devil knows that it's because we are together, we are strong. And so he would like us to be separated. That is why a pastor of one of the big churches in Accra told Reverend Saki that he should, he should, he should, he should think about leaving the church. But he should not always be around. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. A pastor who is supposed to be my friend. You understand what I'm saying? You're supposed to be my friend. When you see me, you smile. You turn and talk to my associate pastor and tell the person that, you know, uh, you know, you should not always see yourself as an assistant and uh, you see yourself also moving out on your own and so on and uh, as the Lord himself will be using you. Okay. Let me tell you, if you don't know, if you don't know, if you don't know, the strength that we have lies, one of the reasons that we are strong and we have what we have and we are where we are is because we are together. Even though you are in your corner there, you are still part of a big thing. The Bible said, these be they which separate themselves. Sensual, not having the spirit. The Holy Spirit keeps us together. And it's the devil who tries to separate. And you know why he wants to separate you? Because he wants to knock you. So once you are in the group like that, he can't knock you well. He wants to separate you well. Then he will stone you and deal with you. Amen. Amen. So if you are here thinking about leaving the church, Amen. If you are a pastor, and you are thinking of becoming an orangu one day. Brother, brother, I pray for you. I pray for you that God will change your heart. Because it will not be well with you. I can assure you. Amen.
I'm not saying that you cannot go to another church. You can go to another church. But don't spoil what we are doing here. You are free. The doors are open. You can go anytime, any day. But when you are going, don't spoil. Just move quietly. You don't even have to notice that you are going. If that is what you want to do. But don't try to disturb what we have been building with our lives. And our hearts. And our time. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, unity, love, and teamwork. The next reason is that it is a church of a can-do man. It's only a can-do man who wants to have a mega church. Is that not so? The next reason is that more pastors are trained in a mega church. Right now we have well over 200 Pastor Eddie, how many? Over 300. You know, we have over 300 people that are pastors or being trained to be pastors. Over 300, that's over 300 churches. At that we can we have 500 churches. At that we can we have 1,000 churches. Oh, yes. Amen. Because we are training more people. Amen. Are you listening to me today? We are training more and more and more and more people. So when you have a large church, you can train more people to be pastors. How many want us to train more people? How many would like to be trained to be a pastor? Huh? I can see some hands over there. Some of you are even standing up. You are blessed. The next, how many reasons do you have? 22. 23. More ministry work is done. The next one. More lay people become workers in the ministry. And the last one. More Special ministries are released. What is a special ministry? Like orphanages. Remembering the poor. Amen. Helping the poor, the needy, the sick. Helping with education. They are all special areas. Are you listening to me? How many want us to have a church where you have your own hospital? You go with your lighthouse membership card. And when you go, your treatment is different. Huh? How many want that? When you are going to deliver, you go to Lighthouse Maternity Hospital. Amen. And you are delivered. How many would like to be in hospital where they can pray for you in the hospital? As you are going to be operated upon, your pastor will pray with you before you sleep. Huh? How many would like to be in a place where we have your, our own school? School, school, suku. The brother over there in the glasses, he doesn't want our, us to have our own school. The brother over there, ah, you've decided now. He just changed his mind. How many would like us to have our own university? <laughs> university, university. Huh? Can a small church have a university? Do you see the buildings you are staying in? To build that place is not that the number of concrete and iron rods in that place is not a small thing. You see this building like this? Ha! Huh. Before you can build it, then it will be stepping like this. Oh! Even the filling, filling. Or concrete. Huh? Look at the ceiling. This white, these squares. You know how much one is. One of the squares. And there are plenty. These glasses, this fluorescent tube is a special, it's not four feet, five feet. Special fans with long umbrellas. <laughs> you see the wooden floor? It's a special type of floor. What do they call it? Parquet. Parquet floor. You are walking on, you don't know the name, it's called parquet. <laughs> parquet. Before you can get parquet. Pray that when you build your house, you can put parquet floor on the floor. It's a special type of floor. Huh? You see the square, small, small, very, very expensive. Can a small church, which cannot buy even microphone, can they make a parquet floor? No. But as we become mega, we are going to have parquet floor and our own university in the name of Jesus. And some of you will be lecturers in the university. 
did you know that in the University of Ghana Medical School, they give preference to children of lecturers of the University of Ghana Medical School? Dr. Brown, what I'm saying, is it, is it correct? Yeah. So when you come to the school and they have got aggregate six, three, you know, AAA, A level. I don't know how they do it now, but in our time, AAA, okay, AAA, that's three, AAB is four, ABB is five, BBB is six, BBC is seven, BCC is eight. So maybe they'll do aggregate up to, let's say, six for medical school at least leg on. Then you are just born to the right man. That is Electra. Your aggregate is 12. Then you come. My father is Professor So and So. Ah, yes, yeah, your place, guaranteed. Whether you get whatever, I, I'm sure they have some degrees, you have, you have qualifications you have to have, but still. And so today, when you go to the University of Ghana Medical School, you see there's le- university lecture students, plenty. I know several of the children of the lecturers. I don't know what grades they have. When they ask them what they have, but they have a better deal. A time will come, you just say, look, my father is a pastor in Lighthouse, so I've come into the university, so just enter. <laughs> How many have decided that we should have a university? Huh? Yeah. Or you come say, I'm a, member, I'm a member of the church for the last 17 years. I've been paying tithes for 14 years. The first three years I've been slid, but at least the 14 years I've been paying. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look, you see, I, I don't know how we will do it because it's a very difficult project. But we should pray that God will help us to have our own university. I wouldn't like to really do it because it takes away time and then the concentration. So maybe we have to get ourselves together, members and form a private university, lighthouse university, and then we should just be running. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And then we will just have lecturers who we'll lecture, who we'll get our own degrees, qualification. Look, when I went to university 17 years ago, 1982, they were putting us two in a room, sometimes three. 17 years have gone by. Now they are putting four, six. Normally six and then eight. When one person coughs, <coughs> tuberculosis, uh, pneumococcus, all kinds of animals are just moving through the room. You can't even read in your room. In our time, we had a chair and a wardrobe, and we had a little kitchen. You had a table. You can sit down. You can learn in your room. You can learn at the library. But today, you can't even learn in the library. The library is full. You cannot learn in your room because there, there's no space for any table. It's just bank beds. You understand what I'm saying? Most of you, by the time you have children, 17 years to come, 20 years from now, do you think the government is going to build another university? They are just painting teacher training colleges and calling them universities. Yeah. They are not building any new university. And even the people who are lecturers in the universities, they are all living. So 20 years from now, it's likely that we wouldn't have any place for our children to go. So it will be in our interest to have our own university within the next few years. Amen. Amen. And it will be advantageous to be a member of Lighthouse. Hallelujah. But we cannot do it if we are a small church. And you know how much money we need? I was talking to the Chancellor of the Central University College. And the monies that they have spent to build that university. You don't have an idea. You can't imagine it. Billions. Billions. And then the bills. One day I went to Central University College and I saw, I saw the people that they were paying. Professor this from this, professor this from that. Then different departments and the offices and the air conditioners were on. The hostel was running. I said, ah! at the end of the month, the bill, 
that will come. I can't imagine. It's not a small thing. A small church cannot do it. You have to be mighty. But we are going to do it. Amen. Amen. How many want us to have a small church? Raise up your right hand. How many want us to have a big church? Okay. Very good. So, I told you, I'm just explaining the name of the church to you. In 1995, this word mega church came up. Amen. Shake the person next to you. Tell the person, this is not a time to be tired. We are just about to close. Oh, I said shake the person. Shake the person. Or give him a blow. Listen. Listen to me. Some people don't like the name Mega Church. How many have realized that some people don't like it? Why don't they like it? Pardon? What is their reason? They say what? We are too known. And what else? We are, we are proud. We are rushing. We are myopic. And they are myopic. What is their reason? We are proud. Okay. Now, that is their problem. Okay? It is a confession. When we started saying mega church, our church was not as big as it is now. And even this is not yet the mega church. We have not yet reached mega church status. I want to just share with you a dream before we close. Somebody gave me a telephone call and he told me he does not even belong to our church but he knows us and he said he has had two dreams about our church this was the third dream the first two dreams involved two pastors in our church one of them concerned a pastor and that pastor did something and it was exactly as he saw it in the dream and he didn't come and tell me. The second dream was about another pastor who also did exactly what he dreamt. So when he had this dream, his, his friend advised him, said, go and tell the bishop about this dream. Because the way it is, it will happen. And when it happens, we know that it is the Lord who is doing it. In the dream... He saw that Lighthouse had become a very, 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 very big church. He said that it had become like the largest church in Africa. And, and it, was not, it was not only in Ghana, Africa. And it had become like the largest church, big, very large all over. And so he called me and he told me that, he wanted to see me and he wanted to tell me but because he had had two dreams about that and they were all true when this one too came he wanted to say it listen to me this church, this camp are you listening to what I'm saying is the time we are going to pray that dream into existence <laughs> amen we are going to pray it down. That whatever the Lord will do, He should do it. He should pour out His Spirit on us and upon the church. We didn't come here to prophesy sardines and sugar into our destiny. We came here because of the work of God. College. And the monies that they have spent to build that university. You don't have an idea. You can't imagine it. Billions. Billions. And then the bills. One day I went to Central University College and I saw, I saw the people that they were paying. Professor this from this, professor this from that. Then different departments and the offices and the air conditioners were on. The hostel was running. I said, ah! at the end of the month, the bill that will come. I can't imagine. It's not a small thing. A small church cannot do it. You have to be mighty. But we are going to do it. Amen. Amen.
How many want us to have a small church? Raise up your right hand. How many want us to have a big church? Okay. Very good. So, I told you, I'm just explaining the name of the church to you. In 1995, this word mega church came up. Amen. Shake the person next to you. Tell the person, this is not a time to be tired. We are just about to close. Oh, I said shake the person. Shake the person. Or give him a blow. Listen. Listen to me. Some people don't like the name Mega Church. How many have realized that some people don't like it? Why don't they like it? Pardon? What is their reason? They say what? We are too known. And what else? We are, we are proud. We are rushing. We are myopic. And they are myopic. What is their reason? We are proud. Okay. Now, that is their problem. Okay? It is a confession. When we started saying mega church, our church was not as big as it is now. And even this is not yet the mega church. We have not yet reached mega church status. I want to just share with you a dream before we close. Somebody gave me a telephone call and he told me he does not even belong to our church but he knows us and he said he has had two dreams about our church this was the third dream the first two dreams involved two pastors in our church one of them concerned a pastor and that pastor did something and it was exactly as he saw it in the dream and he didn't come and tell me. The second dream was about another pastor who also did exactly what he dreamt. So when he had this dream, his, his friend advised him, he said, go and tell the bishop about this dream. Because the way it is, it will happen. And when it happens, we we'll know that it is the Lord who is doing it. In the dream... He saw that Lighthouse had become a very, 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 very big church. He said that it had become like the largest church in Africa. And, and it, was not, it was not only in Ghana, Africa. And it had become like the largest church, big, very large all over. And so he called me and he told me that, he wanted to see me and he wanted to tell me but because he had had two dreams about that and they were all true when this one too came he wanted to say it listen to me this church, this camp are you listening to what I'm saying is the time we are going to pray that dream into existence <laughs> amen we are going to pray it down. That whatever the Lord will do, He should do it. He should pour out His Spirit on us and upon the church. We didn't come here to prophesy sardines and sugar into our destiny. We came here because of the work of God. How many are interested in the work of God going on? How many know that the church is for you? It's your church. Amen. It's your church. It's not somebody says your church. And this word mega church there is a meaning to it hallelujah and our church is not the only church called mega church there are other churches called mega church so even when we wanted to get an address on the internet we tried to use mega church but other churches have already taken mega church so right now our internet address is www.lighthousechapel.org or so because Mega church had been taken by some people. You get what I say? So it's a confession. Everybody is free to use it. Just like Willis Chapel. They say, the church is actually called Living Faith. Word something, something, Living Faith. But they have changed it to, it has become Willis Chapel. 
And ours has also become mega church. And as you say mega, mega. You are a mega brother. Hey! Charlie, you don't understand what I say. You are a mega brother. I am going to have several millionaires in this church. Several. 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 And one day I will fly. The whole plane will be full of only lighthouse people. DC. Whether it is DC 10 or DC whatever or whether they have a new one. Only lights. When we are going, the whole plane. The whole plane. The whole plane. Just like how we have hired buses. Buses. The whole bus is full of our members. There was a time that, listen, there was a time that when our church was going to uh, Agabapto first, it we used one bus to put the whole church in. <laughs> things have changed. I said things have changed. And things are still changing. So there will be several millionaires in the church. More business big time. When you keep calling yourself mega brother, mega sister, mega brother, mega sister, mega. Mega means big. Not fat. Oh. You can take it any, anyhow if you want it to be fat. Amen. You want it to be a spiritual thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so finally, what we want you to see is that the Holy Spirit is like rain. Amen. And God sends His Spirit like rain. And when the Spirit of God falls like rain on something, it becomes very, very big. Is that not so? How many have done some farming before? Farming. Have you noticed that when it rains, Things change. Huh? If you go to Tamale, that is one of the places you can see that thing. The first time I went to Tamale, I thought I was in the middle of Sahara Desert. But the second time I went, it was the rainy season. And I thought I was in Takrade. It's two different worlds. No rain. The place is dry. I've never felt heat like how I felt. I thought about Lazarus and the rich man in hell. Because for the first time, when you move your hand like this, you feel the heat, the hot air. When you move your hand like that. Hot. But a few months later, and everywhere was dry. A few months later, when I came there, at the another time, everywhere was green, just like Takradi. So I said, at this place is just like Takradi. Because Takradi is green. It's not as green as Kumasi, but Takradi is better than Accra. Rain makes a big difference. And so we have come to this camp to pray for the rain. To fall on us. And we will just be there and we see that things are changing. And how does it happen? Nobody understands why and how things grow and change. It just changes when the rain comes. And the rain is going to fall on the church. The rain is going to fall on you. Some of you pastors... With some li- little groups, it's going to change. It's going to change. You will see the effect of that from this very camp. Lift up your hand and thank the Lord right now. Oh, thank Him. Thank Him. Hallelujah. Jesus, we didn't come here, Lord, for nothing. 
We came here, Lord, to receive. We came here, Lord, to walk in the fullness of our calling as a mega church. You have called us to be a mega church, a big church, a church which has got millions of people within it, a church which affects millions of people. And we thank you for the vision. We thank you for the dream, Lord. We thank you for the vision, Lord. And we know, oh God, that you have done it already. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody shouted, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord.